It's a good question. Okay, that's a really good question. So an ROI on our investments in our communities doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me, okay? Every dollar we provide comes directly from us to our foundation, and every dollar will directly impact a student. That's how we measure our return on investment. It's almost time to go. Do you have everything in your backpack? Uh, books, homework, everything. Hi, my name is Charlotte Zwick. I go to school at Denver Academy. And you made your lunch today? Yep, I'm in my backpack as well. It's Tuesday, do you have Smart Lab? Mm -hmm. Me and Gabby are working on uh, My name is Caroline, and I am Charlotte's mom. I'm Carl, I'm Charlotte's dad. How's it coming along? Really well. We're going to the third level at this point. All right, have a good day at school. Bye, I love you. Love you. Don't take away. We chose Denver Academy, well, first of all, there was nothing anywhere close to it. And in doing the research, I mean, it's definitely in the top 10 in the country for kids with dyslexia and ADHD, which is what Charlotte has. So we actually moved from Boulder to Denver for her to go to Denver Academy. All the kids there are very smart. If they have a learning difficulty, they're here for a reason. Everyone is so welcoming. I love the teachers. I love projects that we do. So our philosophy at Denver Academy is every child learns in a different way and they learn their best way when you meet them at their needs. So we have the ability to have a structure for kids that allows for differentiation within the classroom and then also within social and emotional needs as well. I've never experienced a place that is so special where the, the faculty, the staff, everyone cares beyond their own bottom line about, about the kids. The teachers are wonderful. The kids are special, the kids are great, and that's why I, I've been here for so long. I guess one of the things that's really obvious is she's always had a, an aptitude for math. And uh, at the very end of her time uh, in public uh, school, her love of math had dwindled a bit and it, it really wasn't showing through. It was just hard because I learned differently than them. I was held back so much, it was hard for me to keep focused because my teacher would hand me a worksheet, I'd be done with it in around five minutes and keep working on it for another half an hour. And when we got here, she really blossomed because she felt challenged, uh, was able to uh, take on the challenges in the way that she wanted to. She was able to understand how she learns better and advocate for herself and really step out of some of the boundaries that she was seeing in her other environment. It's been awesome. Every kid there is amazing. They're all very supportive. Smart Lab is definitely my favorite class at the time being. You know, to be at a Smart Lab that we've donated and to see the kids engaged and excited about technology, whether it's coding or robotics or it's, it's exciting. And it's, a, it's an opportunity I didn't have as a child uh, that I know would have meant a lot to me. And generally, we just need more exposure to STEM. It's important, it's, it's the future of our country, and it's what's driving our industry. We've always tried to implement STEM activities within our own curriculums, but now to have a space for that to, to take place is wonderful. The kids have a, more excitement to go to a smart lab and the Campos EPC uh, provides that for them. Every kid I know loves it and looks forward to it. It's recess is over. Oh, it's smart lab now. Charlotte has an amazing computer mind. She's an amazing coder and has been coding for a long time. So Charlotte is definitely a go-getter. Um, she already knows a handful of coding languages herself and was really able to establish almost like a teaching role herself here and become um, like an independent worker for and role model for the other kids. I started out with Scratch in second-ish grade. It's what all the beginner coders start out with. I used it in Smart Lab and I got to teach a few kids some stuff. So we started out the year with circuitry. We built automatic wind farms. We had little propellers that would power an LED light and that would lit up. Uh, some of the projects they've been working on recently are the Lego WeGo, where they get to construct different types of robots and code them using an iPad. Um, another is another constructing kind of hand building. So we try to do computer-based and hand building and switch between those two platforms. 
It's called Gooby, and they make architectural models with that. Yeah, we rely on support from our from our community, um, from philanthropists um, to support our school, to support support our facilities and our program. We don't get government assistance, so uh, support is uh, it's huge for us. You know, where we're affecting over 3,000 kids a year through our foundation, through things like Smart Labs. Uh, we're doing so facilities, scholarships, summer bridge programs at universities, internships, mentorship. Ultimately, we're looking at a, a path where we can uh, significantly affect minorities and, uh, and, and women in the communities that we serve to get them involved in STEM fields. Being a female in engineering, I have noticed that a lot of girls, we lose a lot of girls in middle school and high school because they stop feeling confident in math and science. And one of the great things about DA is that they um, have allowed Charlotte to go at her own speed in math. And now with the new campus EPC Smart Lab, she is able to really show her strengths at school. And one of her strengths is coding. I think the, the biggest piece of growth for her is being comfortable and being um, comfortable and being a leader. My dad always said this to me, if you can teach it to someone else, you definitely know what you're talking about. When I fail, it's, uh, especially with coding, it's, okay, that doesn't work. Um, let's try this now. If you can turn that into your motivation, you can turn that disappointment into fuel to keep going. Especially when I was first learning Java, and I'm looking at this code, and I'm like, this is perfect, and I've somehow spelled something wrong, and I'm like, Nothing's wrong with the coding part, it was the spelling, and just having something click. Yeah. Like, spelling a word and it just clicks, and it, I get it right every other time. We've got a, um, a Chromebook for her, and making sure she can't get to anywhere that she's not supposed to, and also keep it to where she can only access it at certain times. We and installed software. we fought for a year and a half on her finding every back door and how to shut that <laughs> off and get around it. And We would have to check it pretty much daily to make yes. sure it was still installed. Apple is much better at parental controls. So, she so hasn't we, figured that one out yet. Yeah, we, so Actually, we wouldn't know if she had. <laughs> <laughs> it's transformative. I've watched kids come with uh, anxieties and difficulties in learning. And then I, I've been here long enough where now they come back and visit me. and they're in college or they've just graduated college and it's it's because of what we do here that they can that they can succeed in in academics but in life in general the return on investment doesn't come from our clients it doesn't come in our pocketbooks it comes with the person that i run into at chipotle that says hey i went into your summer bridge program last year and now i'm going to see you boulder that's what that's where it matters and that's the return because at the end of the day our companies will, you know will morph the industries will change Everything evolves, but that student's life was impacted. That, that's how we measure our return. The campus EPC has been incredible. I've loved working with the STEM lab, and I love what they've done with it, and I really hope they continue on, put this in different schools, give kids like me a chance to go on out there, put ourselves in the world, and given us this great opportunity to learn.